everybody welcome back to the tournament of shame we're jumping right into this with dan geesling hey man bear what's going on man it's round four how you doing so far i'm getting better with each game that's awesome uh, as you, you sure? can as you can tell by that display <laughs> <laughs> so uh oh, currently, currently i'm only three how about you uh i'm doing pretty good i haven't i haven't dropped a series yet or a game i guess but robin mathis I brought out the A game in him, I think, man. Those two, I, I one-handedly in the first game of each of those series, but then out of nowhere, it was like Mathis went up on me like three to two for a long time in the second game. And then Rob was mounting a comeback, man. Like he was on a furious rampage. So I'm wondering if the same is going to happen between us. Wait, so you're telling me you, you, I know you haven't lost a series, but you haven't even lost a, a straight up match yet? I haven't lost a game yet, no. That's slightly concerning for someone who... I've won some games. I haven't won any yeah. series, though. But You, you know, uh, took Nick to a pretty tight one, though, didn't you? Yeah, I felt like he was... I thought El Paco Patrol was better than him, though. Really? Yeah. Huh. That's just me, though. But Nick said he hasn't played in a while, so... Uh, that makes sense. Um, but you know what, Bear? I, I look at you as, like... You're the oh. Boston Red Sox. I'm the Yankees. I mean, maybe... Let, let me rephrase that. You're, sure. like, the peanut, peanut butter, and I'm, like, the... Je no? I'm sure you're oil and I'm water. I, I look oh, at you as like God. my rival in the tournament of shame. I can get down with that. Well, that you know, just means I'm gonna go completely cutthroat. On <laughs> well, it stems back to that goofball goals. We had that. Oh, that playoff. That very intense game. Yeah, I remember that. And you were talking trash. I was talking some mad shit to you. You were. You're like I was the. Saying, yeah, you're saying a lot of stuff. I was saying Dan Giesling. What are you doing? You were. That's, that's about all I was saying. I think that's the only bit of trash talk I know. You're like the anti-Ryan. I try to goat Ryan into trash talk, and he refuses. Uh. <laughs> Dude, I'll... If you want to play the throw and smack at each other game, I'll play that one. You will. Yeah. You're pretty good at that. I have a tournament of shame smack talk edition. <laughs> well, my tournament is shame smack talk edition. The only thing I have to say to you is that you like Halo, oh. Halo Master Chief collection. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> this guy. And then I mic drop off that. Going below the belt. <laughs> My goodness. Oh, oh no, that was pretty bad. It was a confusing strategy. You definitely got me on the ropes here. Oh, good play. I feel like I'm a great number two or number three defender, but if you got to count on me for goals on your Rocket League team, yeah, you're probably not going to win. You're playing much, much better in your own net than you are anywhere else thus far. Uh, oh, gross. 3 0, huh? That's how you want to do it. Kind of is. Kind of is. So what's been going on, man? So you made a big move, huh? I did. I'm up in the Pacific Northwest now. Speaking of which, you're playing on the U.S. East server here. You're trying to <laughs> slowly, like, whittle away at my advantages. So uh, how was that? I'm loving the Pacific Northwest. It's a beautiful place. What, uh, what, sp the... what sparked the move? We just kind of wanted to. Oh, good We want to be in an area. Well, I mean, first of all, we want to be in not Utah. That was, <laughs> that was one of the biggest elements of it. And then... <laughs> We wanted to be a little bit closer to just sort of industry related stuff. I mean, of course, we got PAX Prime going on up here, Microsoft offices, Amazon, which now owns Twitch, which is kind of a big deal in the space of the gaming world. But uh, apart from that, it's just a little bit of cabin oh, fever. Nice, nice goal. Nice. Yeah, no, no, I'd, that makes sense. So there's clearly a lot more going on in that area of the country for gaming as opposed to. Oh, yeah. I think there is an office. Uh, of a company in Utah, in Salt Lake City. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you which one it is, but I, I'm sure it exists. There's a what? There's an office of a oh. company. I thought you That's said... as much as I can tell you. I thought you said office. I'm like, I don't want to sound dumb and ask him what, what the heck is an office <laughs> mean, but... Um, oh. so, so you moved to Washington State, correct? Yep. So did you, like, do the whole, like, U-Haul thing, or what did you do? We rented a Penske truck, which is kind of a ridiculous thing. That's like a huge semi. That's like it's not kind of like a U-Haul. They let you just take it. Kind of like they you took they that don't goal. Check your, oh yeah, that one for sure. That was a Penske truck goal <laughs> I ever saw. It's they don't they don't check your license for special qualifications. They don't check your driving history. Nobody asked me for like a history of my truck rentals. <laughs> they just say like here's a 16 foot vehicle. <laughs> We're sure you're capable of handling it. Sorry about that. Oh, that was an impressive goal. You took it like <laughs> mid-air strats. I've been learning that angle on the wall, actually. That one I've been practicing a little bit in my 
in my time spent with Rocket League. Ooh, interesting, interesting <laughs> approach to the kickoff. So what have you learned about kickoff meta as you've been playing the 1v1 so far? The only thing I, the, everything I know I've learned from Ryan, and he always tells me to mm -hmm. um, do the flip kick. Yeah, that's a big one. But then he also taught me the counter to it. So, right. so once I started to learn the flip kick, then he started countering me. So it's kind of a scumbag move. <laughs> that is exactly what he would do. <laughs> yeah. Teach you, teach you the move, teach you the counter. Oh, no, oh, I will take it. Dan. There oh. we go. Just getting going here. So, so you rent the 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 semi. Yeah. And are you like, did you play like semi truck simulator before you? I've I've got a little bit of Euro truck sim yeah. experience in my belt. Well, I mean, lucky for me, I have driven a milk truck in the past. What? Yeah. I was a milkman for three months. What? <laughs> <laughs> Like glass bottle milkman or like? No, no, no. Oh, okay. uh, it's uh, like the plastic stuff, you know, the future of milkman technology. What brand, if you don't mind me asking? It was Rose Hill. That sounds like pretty like organic-y like special. It was, I don't know. I think they were like, there were two milk delivery companies in my area. They were, they were Rose Hill and Winder Dairy. I think Winder Dairy is probably the closest thing you can get to to like the Walmart of milk delivery. Okay. And then Rose Hill was just the the little guy competing with him. And I didn't I didn't go work for Rose Hill because I have some sort of allegiance to the little guy. I just worked for Rose Hill because I was 16 or 17 years old and I wanted a job where I could stay up until 3 a.m. and not feel weird about it. <laughs> Wait, so would you like deliver it to people's homes or were you like the oh let's go the commercial oh. guy? Oh, uh, I was a uh, home delivery. What? Yeah. They have that? They have that in Utah. So you would roll up to someone's house, knock on the door, and like drop off three gallons of milk? Uh, no, no, no. It would be like in the middle of the night. So at 2 in the morning, I would get out of a massive vehicle uh, in my sweatpants. Hold on, let's, hold on, let's switch colors here real quick. Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. And uh, walk up behind some person's house, open up their personal property, and insert some of my milk into it. No, would you go inside their home? Yeah. Yeah, you just walk in. You gotta drop a note on the bedside table. Let them know that you delivered the milk nice and safely. That's you're making all this up. Yeah, I am. Wait, so, so where would you drop it? They would just have these little coolers and uh, boxes in front of the house, just on the porch, stuff like that. <laughs> what? The house. This is what? What world do we live in where you deliver garbage or you have to take your garbage? own garbage? I didn't, I didn't like delivering garbage to people. Come on. No, that's what Nick has to pay for his garbage. Oh right, yeah. And that's then true. there's people that you put milk in their cooler if they. Yeah. No, like, that's, that's, I don't think, as far-fetched as Nick's garbage thing. No, it is. I mean, like, you can't, like, you can't go to the grocery store? Like, do they have everything delivered? You can go to the grocery store. No, I mean, no one's stopping you from just purchasing milk from Walmart. It's just that, like, you have the option, if you want, of getting milk delivered to your house. Oh, my God, Dan. Almost. Oh. An admirable effort. I tried, but like, is it was it a higher quality milk? I just don't understand why you would yeah, do that. I'd say so. I mean, like, it was a little bit more expensive, obviously, because you had to have it delivered to your doorstep. But I think it was probably a little bit better quality milk than anything you could pick up at the store. Huh? Were your clients t typically like very wealthy? Like, would you roll uh, up to like Carlos Boozer's home and drop off? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think any of the Utah Jazz players live in Utah willingly. I don't know. I guess Gordon Hayward does, but uh, no, it was it was mostly just like suburbs, not necessarily delivering to mansions or anything like that. I'm like, I just didn't think that existed. You seem truly flabbergasted. I am. Oh, there nice go. goal. Thank you. <clears throat> so you would so you do this and then eventually you're just like I can't take it anymore. It was it got it wore me down really quick. I, I showed up to the first day with a monster energy drink and a hip, <laughs> a hip attitude about it. But then, like, very quickly, the world weighed down on me. And I uh, I quit after, like, three months, as I said. Well, what uh -huh. I did, my plan was to just, like, use it as a way to make my 7 a.m. class not as horrifying. Because I, ha I just had to stay up all night anyway, and then I would get off of work and go to class, which seems normal, right? Because there's people that have 9 to 5 jobs and then go to a 5.30 class at night. Uh, that sounds counterproductive. Like, wouldn't you think like class would be the last thing you'd want to do? 
Right. I mean, that would be what it was. Is I would I would go to class after my shift was over, and then I would go home and go to sleep. <laughs> and, totally, <laughs> and totally neglect the class. Yeah. But what about like... Oh, nice. Uh, like a normal life. It, it didn't happen in those days. I had uh, well, okay. So I only del I only delivered milk like four nights out of the week, so it wasn't a full time gig. But I I also didn't do anything apart from deliver milk, sleep, and <laughs> go to class sometimes. And play Halo too. Yeah, tons of Halo too. That was that was another cop out of I don't want to have to go to work during my Halo time. <laughs> but that ended up being exactly what it was because 2 a.m. is prime Halo time. Yeah, I was gonna say when is like prime Halo time would be what Pacific night time because of all yeah, the Microsoft so. users. Right. <laughs> wow. You have to wait How until the Microsoft people are online to play Halo. All right, so Bear, give me some tips here because this is you by far the best player I played against, like not Thank even you. close. So, what do we do here? Well, first of all, I think I'm pretty sure you can't get away with not going for the kickoff. Like, that seems like something people want to switch it up and do. Yeah, it's like a... I don't think it ever really works. You got to at least try to contest the kickoff in 1v1. And then... I don't know. It just... I've, I've got a better feel for where the ball's going to end up. Like, how to hit it at a certain angle to put myself in a better spot. I think it's just a matter of playing the game a lot more. Oh, goodness. There's okay. another, okay, so here's something I can definitely tell you I picked up on and works wonders, is you have to get used to the idea of not necessarily just trying to hit the ball in, in the direction you want it to go, but also learning about the ability to uh, counter hit people, depending on where they're positioned and where they're going to put the ball. So like right now, for example, I wasn't playing to try to go up to the ball, I was playing around where I thought you would hit it. So kind of like poker. Yeah, a little bit. Like changes the game a bit that way. Actually, I don't know how that's at all like poker, but I was going <laughs> to give you that analogy. You, you, the you play the man, you don't play the cards. You, yeah, you, exa exactly. Like, I was talking to the other guys about this, too. You want to you wanna play the position of your opponent a lot of the times, especially in 1v1 where, like, you can take an opportunity if you see that your opponent is out, is out of position to go grab some boost, to set yourself up for a better hit later on, like, on the other side of the field. Like, for example, that's almost what I'm doing right now is just not really trying to chase you, but trying to set myself up in a better spot so I can do something like that. Nice demolition, Got it. Though. Thanks. It's tough, though, man. Like, it's a lot of just playing the game to get better. Like, this is actually kind of, uh, speaking of Halo, this is kind <laughs> of what my progression of being good at Halo turned into was, uh, I, I can only get so good at, like, shooting, right? You can only <laughs> get so good at shooting the ball in Rocket League. But what you can do is learn about positioning, learn about rotations, which only really applies to the two on two and three on three stuff. You can learn about how to like prioritize things, prioritize objectives. Like in this case, of course, there's not much. There's the ball and there's the boost, but kind of applies in the same way. Got it. No, I see what you're saying. So like you, you can become like you can have great control of the vehicle, but then what? Yeah, exactly. Like after that point, you just have to try to pick up on different skills or different knowledge of the game in order to improve. Do you think that when they developed this, this is what they intended? Or do you think they just like, we'll see what happens? That is a question that I keep asking myself of like what their expectations were for this one, because it's obviously like, I'm pretty sure they weren't expecting to have 175,000 concurrent players <laughs> at the time. So that alone, I think is completely exceeded their expectations. But I don't know. I really want there to be a high quality competitive scene for this game don't you think it'll happen i hope so nice shot by the way um real quick side note did you watch hcs a little bit of it yeah did you watch the finals no oh okay all right it's completely for side sure, uh, no i just wondered because uh, i know you're a big halo guy yeah but. i used to watch all, like all the tournaments but now not so much you watch good games though yeah good game man thanks for the tips man for sure good luck in your final round yeah i gotta get a win here you want to take us out Yep, Tournament of Shame. Go check out the links down in the description. You go check out uh, tournamentofshame.com. I believe Caspian Crowda is going to be doing the write-ups for this one, too. So hopefully those are going on. If not, ignore everything I just said. <laughs> and uh, hope you enjoy the videos. And we'll see you in the next one. All right, thanks for watching. Later.